Hello, everybody. Welcome to a special episode of the Great Big Plugin Show on Pure Mix. Uh, thank you for being here wherever you're joining. If it's YouTube, uh, Facebook, wherever it is, please uh, make sure that you hit the like and subscribe buttons to help us out on the channel. It helps us to keep content like this going. Today, we're doing a very, very special thing. We're bringing on Brian Lucy, a famous mastering engineer. He's been on Pure Mix as well. And he has put his hardware rig in the cloud for everybody to use. It's controlled by robots and it's crazy. We're gonna check it out in a second. All right, so let's dive in. So joining me today is Brian Lucy. Brian, welcome. Thanks for being here. Hey, Mark. Yeah. Great, great to be here. It's a fun day. Yeah, this is amazing. Congratulations on today because it's, uh, you know, I guess uh, you've been, you've had it out in the wild for a little bit here, but we're on the cusp of releasing something that you've been working on for quite a while, which is pretty crazy. Um, so yeah, it's, been, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's been about three and a half years of, of since the idea to today of getting it out. Yeah, yeah, amazing. Um, we're going to talk all about uh, what, what it is here in a second and what's gone into that. Um, we'll be diving into examples of how the rig is useful, not just on stereo mastering jobs, but also as a plug-in chain, or I mean, it works as a plug-in, but as a hardware chain on individual sources. So using it on things like drums, vocals, all of that. And then at the end, um, my good friends, Ghost Soul Trio, uh, now known as Ghost Soul, I believe, they sent us an unreleased song to play with, as well as a released one. So we'll be doing some stereo masters of that um, toward uh, the end of the show, too. So it's going to be fun. Yeah. Guys, as always, uh, if you have questions, too, make sure you drop them in the live chat. Um, we've got you here, and that's the fun of doing uh, these review shows as live streams, is you get to be a part of it. It's as much your show as anything. Uh, so we like doing that instead of doing the pre-recorded thing so that you guys can chime in and be like, put that thing on a kazoo. So... <laughs> which is, I believe, what you built the chain for initially was kazoos, right? Yes, 100%. Yeah. <laughs> all, all, all about kazoos. Yeah. That's important. Yeah. Okay, so um, for anybody who doesn't know what Axis Analog is, um, they basically have a bunch of hardware in server racks with um, servos attached to it, and they've created a plugin that you select the piece of gear that you want to use, and then you, you control it from your DAW, just as if the hardware unit was right in front of you. And it's off in a server rack, and robots are turning the knobs for you as you tell it to. And to show us that and talk a little bit more about it, we have um, Chris from Axis Analog joining us today. So Chris, hello. How are you? Hey. Nice awesome. to be here, Mark. Yeah, thanks for joining. Uh, let me make sure everybody can see you here. And uh, you actually have the rig behind you there. So this is amazing. Yeah, I do. So this is kind of an example of something that we do with our system is obviously a flying So from top to bottom, it's a signal point. Yeah, uh, hold on one second. I'm going to have you do that. Uh, say that again, because I just need to get your audio for everybody to hear it, which would be good. Hold on, everybody. This is going to be that. Yeah, so if, if, if you can hear me, Mark, so Chris is sitting next to a server rack that I built here at the studio. So that rack represents everything that I use every day. That's it. Um, and it took me a year of getting that together. And then it took three months to tune it because in the analog world, of course, nothing sounds the same as any other piece, piece of analog. analog. There's always There's some variety. variety. And particularly with something like the alpha compressor, which is now, you know, 15, almost 20 years older, this, the, the circuit's the same, but the part suppliers are different. So that was different. Or the Ferriman EQ, I've got custom tubes in there per each band. So very specific new old stock tubes. It's a, it's a boost EQ for me. So, so all of that was done here for about three months of A, being it in my room. So I'd be working on something and then I would use this rig what I call the B rig or the rig in the cloud. And so I would compare the two and I would tweak things. And over a period of three months, I got it to sound like 99% the same. Maybe the B rig sounds better, but we'll skip that. And so Chris is sitting next to what he did, which was to take the rig and put all the robotics on all the pieces. Right. Awesome. Okay. So guys, bear with me one second. Uh, I'm going to bring Chris back on screen and I just got to get his audio in there for everybody to hear. Cause that'll be a nice thing. Uh, 
All right, so, so bear with me. So Chris is just on screen, and I'm talking here, and we're going to get his audio in. Stand by, everybody. We're professionals. Don't try this at home. It's highly, highly professional. Yeah. Uh, okay. So stand, stand by. It's a, lot of, it's a lot of tech today. It is a lot of tech. We've got Brian in Los Angeles. Chris um, is in Colorado. Uh, this is a whole thing. So let me grab that one. All right. Uh, can you talk to me, Brian? All right. All right. We're going to go over here and I'm going to do a crazy thing. Let's try this. Apologies, everybody. Um, all right. Uh, that we might have to hold off on for a minute because I can't show Chris and hear him at the same time for the moment. Okay. Well, okay. Is, is he visually on for everybody? Uh, here he comes. So he is visually on right now. Okay. So uh, until we can figure out his audio, just just making clear, he's sitting next to the rig. So from the top of the rig down to the bottom is the signal flow, and it mirrors what I've used here on every record for you know close to twenty years now. Mm -hmm. So this this chain is uh, very unique. It's full of unique pieces, and it does really unique things when you use it all together. Um, the chain actually starts with D to A and ends with A to D. So it's a little different than, um, than you might think because it's actually the exact chain that I use every day. And the A to D is a Pacific Microsonics Model 2, which 20 years ago, they were $24,000. And if they were made today, the owner of the company said they would be 70, which of course no one could pay for. Uh, but they couldn't continue to keep it going because the the parts weren't available. So in A to D shootouts, that's still considered one of the best, if not the best A to Ds. And so it's able to really capture all the beautiful things that are happening with the chain. Awesome. Okay. So, um, yeah, so we can see Chris, we see the rig there. Um, I think we should probably pull up the, uh, pull up the um, plug in and, and show people some stuff here. So. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, awesome. So let me go over to our Pro Tools rig. There we go. All right. So uh, this is the plugin without anything loaded in it. And um, one cool thing about this is uh, I'm going to bring up Brian's chain. And he's included a preset with all of his starting settings for the desk, which is pretty rad. So when I do that, it loads up our whole chain uh, with with the settings that you start on every day, Brian. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah. So th these images are all of the pieces of equipment, but uh, not, some of them are just a graphic that you can't move. So, for example, the D to A, the MyTech, that's a very old but still cool D to A. It's the start of my chain because it's very transient rich. So it's adding transients, um, which is a really good thing. <laughs> And that one we don't touch. It's just a nice picture for you to see. The next one over, the overstayer, that's a modified overstayer, a um, little bit better on the on the pots, nothing fancy on the modification. And this is basically like a, it's a FET compressor. So it's sort of like a match pair of 1176s, except the transformer is cleaner. So it gives you that FET uh, smack if you want it, but the transformer is not quite as heavy handed. And it's a very beautiful transformer sound. And so this one uh, with the engage button there is optional. I don't I don't use that one every day, but it's really cool. And if and if you've got that vocal we were just looking at before we went on, we'll 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 put this on the vocal because it's really cool. Okay. And so all all of those knobs are adjustable, and um, and you know as you turn those, it's turning the robotics next to Chris. So then we've gone to the focus right. This one's a whole lot of controls. Uh, full EQ here. This has been heavily modified. These things were quite fancy in their day, but I've always thought that the stock ones sounded awful. <laughs> so we removed uh, all of the 5534 chips, which are little 50 cent jelly bean uh, chips, and they're Burr Brown OPA 627s. Those are $16 chips. And we also 
uh, removed and completely eliminated, I think about 40 caps. And so that is a really nice solid state EQ, slightly forward, like all solid state things. And it's complemented by the Fairman, which we'll get to. But in between, we have the alpha compressor. This is serial number one um, here at my studio. And this one is the new one. I had the first alpha compressor and I use it every day. This is obviously a new one. And this one is really, really handy. You can think of it as SSL style, but much, much more beautiful and much, uh, much easier to use. It's super musical and you can slam it if you need to, or you can just tickle the meter a bit. Um, it's got a mid side feature with a side chain for the mid. It's got a side EQ if you need it. I have it set in default in mid side mode, but we can use it in stereo as well. And then we've got the, the Fairman. This is an amazing 2VQ. These aren't made anymore. Um, I think Vintage King had them last at like 17,000. Although fortunately I've, I've never had to pay that much for one. This is 22 tubes uh, with a clean transformer. So you can think of it like a sort of like pull tech, but not the heavy handed transformer side, more of a, a better phase accuracy. So really just beautiful tube enhancement, not so much a transformer enhancement. Again, in this chain, I wanna keep the low end not getting too messy with transformers. And all the tubes in there have been upgraded from the Russian stuff that came stock with new old stock stuff for band, which I did by ear because I'm a former guitar player. And so I love tubes, I'm a tube junkie. So there's you know, particular boost tubes in each band that sound really good for those bands. And then from there, uh, it gets converted with the Pacific Microsonics. That's just a visual. We don't control that at all. And this thing is a beautiful, beautiful uh, D, uh, A to D. And then it goes digitally to the the thing people joke about, but actually it's really cool. So this is Waves L2 hardware. So we're going digital in, digital out, and it's at a fixed setting. Uh, the setting is actually, that is correct. It's 1.4. So the thing with this is there's a really nice mid-range pop that only this piece does when it's set between a half dB and one and a half dB of reduction. And so we've got it at 1.4. Past a dB and a half reduction, it sounds awful <laughs> and should never be used for any purpose ever. So it's really not there for limiting. It's more there for the tonal component. And then from there, we go digitally out and into the Crane Song head. And these three controls are controllable and saveable by the user. Uh, triode Pento Tape. My stock setting is a simple 110. That's what I use every day for mastering. You can obviously do more if you want to do tracks. Uh, you can crank on those more. And um, yeah, so that's a quick run through. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, there's so much uh, about this, and um, we're going to probably go more into detail as, as we talk through and do some examples and everything. But one of the cool things about this is um, these all of these uh, pieces of gear have been hand-selected by you over time, but not even just that. You went down to a component level, like, what, you know, for, for example, with the focus right, um, and, and really dove into it, and then, you know, hand selecting the tubes for the ferrumen and really dialing that in by ear. That's something that, um, you know, it's it's not a chain that you just call up Vintage King or Sweetwater and say, hey, send me one of those, you know, which is which yeah, is, yeah. I mean, this is this is literally this is literally a recreation of the chain that I've used for every record I've done. I've got nine Grammy winners in eleven years. I have, mm -hmm. you know, five hundred, four hundred clients a year. So everything every day is through this. And the fun of this for me, which we're going to do here in a second, once we stop talking, is putting it on some tracks because this is a ridiculously powerful chain for stems. It doesn't have to be mixes or masters. Yeah. Uh, awesome. So, and 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 if you and if you kind of broke it down a little a little bit more hypothetically, you've got fat compression, mm -hmm. but really nice. You've got a solid state EQ, really really nice. You've got a SSL style compression, class A discrete, really nice, really flexible, and you've got two VQ. So you've got really kind of these four very classic flavors. And I always use the Focusrite, the Alpha, the Fairman. Those those three kind of are on all the time for me. And then the overstayer is the option because it has that transformer color. 
and it's subtle but it's a it's a it's a strong color and it's not always wanted um but it's not as strong as a pair of 1176s which we will see let's go ahead and do this vocal and we'll All right. we'll throw that, we'll throw that in the vocal okay great so for anybody who's seen the show before you've heard this vocal we use it uh quite a bit to demo out different compressors because um if i close the plugin for a second you can kind of see in here uh, at the beginning of it, we have some pretty random dynamics. There's one strong popping um, portion of the vocal, and then things get balanced out uh, further down the chain. This is from a uh, recording workshop that we did live at MSR Studios in New York with Mick Guzowski Engineering. The vocalist was so good, she only needed one take. Mick was still dialing in his settings at the beginning of it and then had it locked in at the end. So uh, as we do on, on the show here, we're going to use the first portion of this, which is really dynamic, to see if we can dial in some really cool compression, which I don't think is going to be a problem. All right. I don't, I don't think we're going to have any problem with that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Awesome. Um, so do you have a suggestion for where to start, Bran? Well, let, let's just listen to it one time. Remind me of it. We just heard it before, but let me hear it again. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, the chain is in right now, but I don't have um, compression happening. Uh, Chris, we are seeing gain reduction on the right side of the Alicia, and uh, that's just because Chris has a, a film light set up, and there's actually like optical... Um, there's an optical capture device on the meters for this, for, for you know, catching the metering and everything. So Chris yeah. is adjusting that. There you go. Okay, cool. There you go. So now our meter is accurate. All right, so okay, let's, let's, let's hit it. Here we go. Why you gotta make me feel so defeated? Why you make me look so green in the eye? Oh, you overpower me so instinctively. No matter where I run, I just can't overcome. I know that you love to me. All right. So there we go. So we definitely have that, that giant pop right here that's happening. Oh, you overpower me. And then some other stuff. What do you think, Brian? Um, my, my audio dropped out actually. Oh, okay. All right. We'll, uh, we'll hit it again in a second. Uh, but, uh, from hearing it, uh, 20 minutes ago when we were setting up, uh, let's definitely throw in the, the FET compression there. Cool. And let's crank on that enough to get maybe five DB a reduction with the ratio at, let's say eight to one. So over on the right side. Yeah. Let's crank up the ratio so here. So we'll kind of smack that and then um Turn it up it a little bit. Yeah. And when you and then let's go on the alpha and let's bring the threshold up, which is in the upper left corner, since we're we're in a link mode. Um yeah, just bring that up to get, you know, three or four lights there. Yeah. Just awesome. A little bit. Uh, you won't have to actually I need to turn our link on. So I'm gonna go there you go. here. Absolutely. Absolutely. Turn that on. There you go. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, and then on the Fairman, let's give it a little bit of a boost on the high mid. That's a really sweet boost point. Um, so the high mid is, yeah. Um, I think I might have made the plug-in angry. Oh, there we go. We're back. There you go. So the high mid would be that one. So let's boost that up to like where it says 3. It's not actually 3 dB. These are like 0.75 clicks. But you're in the tube world, you don't care, really. Yeah. <laughs> you just yeah. you can get too caught up in digital and numbers. You just turn it up. So that's, you know, roughly two and a half, three dB, because uh, it's about 0.75 per click. So you've got one, two, three, four, five clicks at 0.75. Yeah. So right around there. And then what you can do is, as we listen to it, you can roll that high midpoint from three and a half K, where it's that where it's set now mm -hmm. and roll it slowly down to like one and a half and roll it up to four and a half and see what you like in terms of those two okay and then maybe the high boost uh it's at 16 just bring that down to 14 all right and then we're not going to move the gain on that Nah, just leave the gain we don't it doesn't need much high end but it'll just it'll it'll pick that up yeah every every little step it, it'll it'll pick up a little more Nice. And most, you were telling me when, when mostly just play with that mid range, you know, play with the mid range frequency and gain. 
Cool. Okay. And it gets a little bit of a boost just by having the band in, right? Oh, oh yeah. No, no. It's when it's on, it's 0.75 up. So yeah, All for right. sure. So yeah, I'll uh, play with it and I'm just going to um, check out the compression again. Uh, so between these two guys and then we'll play with rolling this frequency um, up and down. Yeah. Yeah. Two compressors and, and, and that mid frequency boost. See how that works for you. Okay. Here we go. In the eye, I overpower me so instinctively. No matter where I run, I just can't overcome. The dreaded buffer underrun error. Here we go. All right, stand by with me for one second. I just confused Pro Tools a bit. We're going to get my speakers back on here because I'd like to hear it as I do it. Okay. Oh, oh, Dante, how we don't love you. Dante. We don't, we don't love you. No, especially today. I'm really not enjoying Dante. It's just so unstable across the board. It is. Okay. So yeah. So um, as we were saying, guys, we have quite a bit of tech going today. I've got audio streams going out to Brian and to you guys and uh, all kinds of stuff happening here. So bear with me while I solve a quick issue here. Um, it's quite fun. Here we go. My friends that do live sound have given up on Dante. They're just like, we can't. Yeah. We can't, we can't deal with it. Super fun. So, okay, Brian, I've, I've got you back up on screen here for a second while I solve my issues. Um, yeah. Could you talk a little bit more about, while I'm doing this, about the process um, of, um, you know, maybe how, you know, you, you hand selected these pieces over the years um how you arrived at finding some of them your process of a being different pieces of gear you know uh throughout that entire process because sure yeah well it, it yeah it it took a few years to put the chain together and then it really hasn't changed much at all with the one exception of adding that overstair i wanted to get that you know stereo 1176 but cleaner thing going but really it was just a question of experimenting you know i come to mastering from being a musician and you know, it was like very expensive foot pedals for the guitarist. You know, they they weren't 300 bucks each that you have to add a zero or two. And so I just tried all sorts of gear. I mean, I think I was probably the most annoying customer of the retail world, you know, 20 some years ago, because I tried every single combo. And, you know, I was just looking for something that would enhance everything that would be really, really easy to use in a digital world to enhance everything. And that would have, you know, just the right amount of harmonic color to sweeten pretty much everything, you know? So the, again, the only thing I added was a bit more color with the overstayer a few years ago, uh, which I use, you know, from a mastering standpoint, maybe 25% of the time, third of the time, something like that. But the, uh, the chain was just meant to be easy. So when when you use it and you run something through it, at, if you just start at my stock setting, you will immediately hear the upgrade. Um, the beautiful thing about a good analog chain is that it all sounds good. It's a question of what kind of flavor of good you want. So you don't have to struggle with getting a good sound. You just have to decide what version of good sound that you're after yeah and 
and that's what this does you know so you know my my workflow is very much focused on the music not focused on you know how how to get this gear to work um yeah in in my favor it's really all just immediately like better and immediately what's you know what's the musical preference from from a number of good options you know and yeah so it's the same chain i've had for all along really it just took a took a few years to find it and it was a lot of testing and the and the, the cables between pieces are part of it you know cables do have tone um anyone who tells you they don't should be a little bit uh, worrying um, yeah that's actually something that we're going to talk about too because uh you told me a story about i believe the alicia um we'll come back to it though because i think i got things working and let's play some some audio for okay. the people yeah yeah we'll go ahead and hit it we'll come back to that here we go Green in the eye, oh, you overpower me so instinctively. No matter where I run, I just can't overcome. I know that you're lying to me, that the grass ain't so green. I know it isn't so. You won't let me go. Oh, 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 jealousy. Okay, not a bad starting point there. Yeah, I, I still didn't hear it, but I'm glad you're excited. <laughs> I am excited. <laughs> okay, let's make sure you're getting it. Uh, I don't show you as uh, connected, Brian, so make sure that your listen to is open. Okay, Sweet. I will take a look at that. Yeah. Uh, how's, your, how's the FET compressor? I didn't see that one. Uh, so we were hitting, I want to say, where were we, guys? We were, was it sounding good? Did it sound good? It sounded great to me. Um, it was, you know, hitting maybe 4, 4 dB, uh, 5 on yeah, that's, the spot. That's fine. Yeah. So that one that one permanently has a uh, a little high pass for side chain on the, on, the, on the trigger. So, yeah. Yeah. So if you're hearing it, just go ahead and while I do this, just go ahead and roll through and play with that EQ boost point on the hot, on the, the, the high mid knob of the Fairman. Okay. So, we were at three and a half and run it, you know, run it slowly down to one and run it up to, um, you know, maybe four and kind of see what, see what feels good in that range for you. Great. Okay, cool. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to start first by um, just, I took the, the alpha out and I took oh, you're gonna the pop out. Yeah. yeah. We'll bring him in one by one here. So I'm going to start with the, um, the FET off and the overstayer off. And then when it cycles around, we'll turn that on and check it out. Uh, Perfect. Here we go. Green in the eye. Oh, you overpower me. So instinctively. In the eye. Oh, you overpower me. So instinctively. In the eye. Oh, you overpower me. So instinctively. And then for reference, we started here. So this is just the overstayer. Here's where we were. Green in the eye. Oh, you overpower me. And here's where we are. Green in the eye. Oh, you overpower me. Very cool. Okay, so I'm digging that for a starting spot. Let's go over to the alpha. I'm going to bring that into the chain and let's check it out. Green in the eye. Oh, you overpower me so instinctively in the eye. Oh, you overpower me so instinctively in the eye. Yeah, so definitely getting the control um, that you know we're we're kind of missing from that portion of the vocal. That's that's insane, and it doesn't sound overly smashed to me. Uh, despite we're probably doing like six or seven dB of gain reduction overall, especially on that peak on there. Yeah, it's it's never going to sound smashed. I mean, it's I mean, yeah, it could obviously if you were deaf, but if you, if you have if you have any ability to notice, uh, it doesn't smash because again, this is what I use for mastering. So you can imagine if I'm if I'm looking to get 
transient rich masters that have great tone when you stick a vocal through it it's like come on that's a home run it's yeah a home run you know amazing all right so i'll play it without the fairman and then i'm going to switch the fairman in and what we've done on this we're at about uh three and a half k on the the high mid band and i've got that boosted up uh we'll call them three fairmans instead of three, three. yeah it's about it's about <laughs> three and a half db yeah yeah and, you, and 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 everyone please notice the output knob which is in the upper right corner there left and right output so the output on this fairman is essential to be turned on and up all the time i leave it for pretty much permanently where it is here which is a 3.75 mm -hmm. uh, the the reason is that that is an ef86 pair of tubes that are very sweet they're amperex bugle boys from the late 50s early 60s mm. it's a very beautiful sound and so that that's on all the time and then and so you're gonna you're gonna hear a big gain jump right we're not trying to cheat it's just it's to me that's default just leave it on you can turn it down mark if you want but um and, and if you want to bring it up but but that needs to be up because no matter what you're doing with the rest of the eq that is just money it's very very sweet on all times on all things awesome okay so i'll play it without the fairman and then i'll switch the fairman in uh with the output up so mind the gain jump here we go it's gonna jump make me look so green in the eye Oh, you overpower me so instinctively. No matter where I run, I look so green in the eye. Oh, you overpower me so instinctively. And then, just because I'm curious, after you said that, I'm going to bring it back down to zero. Let's check that out. Make me look so green in the eye. Oh, you overpower me. Yeah, there's a lot more going on there than just a gain boost. Yeah, it's just it's just beautiful all the time on everything. Yeah. So you were three and a half there? Or? Yeah, 3.75 or three and a half or, yeah. The, yeah. the click out of the three, the one between. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. All right, cool. So let's check this out one more time. And then you said kind of um, you would rock back and forth between these. Yeah. Yeah, roll that around between, you know, 1K and four and a half to hear the boost. All right. And if you're, not, if you're not hearing it clearly enough or if you want to over accentuate it, you could bump the gain a little. But I think you'll I think you'll hear it pretty clearly. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely hearing it. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Here we go. OK. Make me look so green. Make in me the eye. Oh, you overpower me. In the eye, oh, you overpower me so instinctively. No matter where I run, I look so green. In the eye, oh, you overpower me so instinctively. No matter where I run, I look so green. In the eye, oh, you overpower me. So instinctive mad yeah, there's something really special at um the click, you know, I don't know if it's thirty five hundred, but um between three and four there, it just kind of seems like it comes to life right there and pops out of the speakers for me yeah that's a that's a really great frequency because it's very hard to push that frequency in plugins, yeah, they they don't like it <laughs> uh it on this box, that's a very nice thing to push. So yeah, that's that's why the 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 thirty five hundred or is the starting point. That's kind of a sweet spot for a mid push. Yeah, and, and you and you could also just go to the low shelf switch mm -hmm. and just turn that shelf boost on off. We only have it at one click at seventy, mm -hmm. but I, I'm interested to hear just taking that bottom out of that if you could. Okay, cool. what, whatever high mid setting you like, if you could just just click that in and out. Yeah, so I'll uh, I'll play it with it in first, and then we'll take it out when it cycles around. Here we go. Make me look so green in the eye. Oh, you overpower me 
So instinctively, no matter where I run, I look so green in the eye. Oh, you overpower me. So instinctively, no matter where I run. Very cool. What do you? Yeah, either, you know, either, either either one. We're not mixing. We're just having fun. But it it kind of shows you how that just that one one little click of a 70 shelf can really be influential on the on how the bottom part of the vocal feels yeah awesome um yeah okay so uh let's say that and and maybe we bring uh chris in to talk a little bit about this too but let's say that i love everything that's happening about this right like i i love this vocal chain and yeah, you can save it with it um yeah and i want to print it Oh, to print it. Okay. So, um, I'm going to bring Chris back on here and give me two seconds. Oh. To get that going. All right. So Chris, you can hear me okay? yeah, you're back. Okay. So, um, so yeah, so we were just playing around. We got a pretty cool vocal chain going, got a good sound going. Uh, and I want to save this. I want to print it into my session or bring it in. Um, what are, what's my process going to be? Yeah. There's a couple of choices there. So because it's a plug in, you you can record the output of the plugin by routing to another track. Mm -hmm. um, that's essentially doing real time streaming, and you're just recording the real time stream from the back. Yeah. Um, the downside to that is that you know there could be an interruption, an internet co connection interruption in the middle of that. Mm -hmm. So we probably don't prefer doing it that way. And then uh, similarly, there's a DAW bounce functionality. You can probably bounce the output of the track to the DAW. But it has essentially, as long as that bounces in real time, it has essentially the same problem. It's a real time stream being recorded. So mm -hmm. what we did to solve that problem is in our plugin, we have a thing at the bottom called the offline processor. And that essentially what it does is it says, let's capture the audio first, the raw audio, the source audio. And so you arm it, and then you play back the section of audio you want to capture. Mm -hmm. And what's happening at that point is it's uploading that audio here next to this equipment and basically storing it. And then once you have it completely uploaded, you press the process button and it's going to process that audio with the settings you currently have on the chain. And, and because it's not going to front the internet, there's there's no chance for a drop off. So that's generally the preferred way of getting your file fixed. So then it'll process it and at the end you can save it as a WAV file and you have the file fixed. Awesome. Yeah, so um, for anybody who's like a little bit, you know, like apprehensive about sending it out, um, you know, and dealing with uh, any loss that might come from streaming, they built in this this offline processor to um, basically alleviate any of that uh, possibility there. So that's that's a really cool thing, and that's in the entire Analog Matrix plugin that has. Um, it's not just exclusive to Brian's chain too. If you use another piece of gear on an Access Analog, um, you can you can do that as well. So it's it's pretty cool. This this whole concept is amazing, and it's it's awesome to just know that you can get in here and actually get experience um, putting you know your mouse on some actual real hardware, uh, and then yeah, and that feature is you know that feature is is there if needed, but it's not you know you don't have to use it if you've got good you know, if the things are going well, you can just you know run it through. Yeah. Yeah, very cool. All right, thank you, Chris. Bring Brian back up here. Welcome back, Brian. Awesome. All right, cool. So, uh, so that's that's a vocal example. Um, what would you like to jump to next? So, uh, what do you have? Do you have some drums or? Yeah, we could do uh, we could do the drums from this song, uh, which is um, more of like a, a regular sounding kit. I have a very sure. not normal sounding kit for Vance Powell that we can play with. I've got some hip hop drums uh, and all that. Well, let's do a natural and an electronic drum example, if you've okay. got one. Of each. Yeah. So let's go up here. I'm going to um, load up your starting preset. Yeah, and you could you could set you could show as well. We could save that preset. So what everything we just oh, yeah. did, everything we just did, we could save it. Okay. So I'm going to go to insert then presets user. I'll say add. I'm going to add a preset, and we'll just call this Brandy Vocal. Right. And we'll save that. So those are super handy. That's something that's something I don't have here. I <laughs> Right. In the in the analog world, it's a recall by hand and so this is amazing because it's, you know, it's doing what we are so 
uh, blessed to have with plugins, but it's definitely not a plugin. Right. Okay. Or it is the greatest, biggest plugin ever. We could look at it. <laughs> awesome. Okay. I, we, I'm going to go win. into a loud section of drums here and just, uh, I'll just hit play. We're going to go through the chain. Um, you know what? Actually, let's take the chain off and just listen to these things dry and then just hear what bringing the chain in does. So here they are dry. Okay, awesome. So let's pull this up here. Gonna hit connect. And yeah, so in, th in this case, let's leave the FET off and just do the alpha compression and some EQing. Okay. Great. So the FET's off. Uh, we're going to use the alpha compressor. I'm going to hit yeah. an absolute. And then we'll do some. You want me to just play with the EQ or you have anything that you let's can just, Let's just start with the threshold and see what you can get on a nice little drum grab. Cool. Here we go. And, and you'll notice, folks, there's a side chain enabled here just to the left of the, the, the middle. The, that side chain is happening. Uh, we've got it set at a default of a low pass under about 70. So go ahead and hit it, Mark. All right, pretty awesome. I know that we get the gain boost from uh, that output tube on the Fairman, as you mentioned, but as soon as it comes, you know, the desk comes into play, it's it's pretty rad. Um, yes. Yeah. Again, it's as soon as it's on, it's cool. And let's just show maybe go go a bit more extreme with the threshold and see see how far you can really take that where it still sounds good to you. Awesome. Can I play with the side chain frequency as well if it eats the kick up? Play with play with whatever you like. Yeah. All right. Cool. Roll that around and see see how it affects grabbing the low end. Yeah. Cool. So smooth, it's pretty crazy. Yeah, it's it's just the sweetest SSL category compression ever, you know. Yeah. Both the tone and the and the grabbing action. It's just the, it's just the best SSL type thing. I mean, it's, it doesn't even really. It's not even fair to say SSL. I mean, it's it's just, it's it's its own thing, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Very. But. Uh, but, okay, so 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 let's leave it where you have it, and then just for fun, bring in the overstayer, and and you know let's add add that. Let let people hear. Yeah, if you just press engage, there's the transformer at this setting, at this preset setting, that's going to just turn on the transformer. So this is a very subtle but real change. Um, maybe more uh, more obvious in uh, you know in program material but just start by turning it on and then you can you know play with the input and and see what see what you can do okay cool so I'll give it um, two bars without it and then I'll engage that here we go
Yeah, definitely hearing a tone. Yeah, it's just like uh, everything is a, a little bit more, uh, a little more in the, you know, out of a desk kind of a vibe. It sounds like it's coming out of a desk. Yeah, which, it, which isn't good for everything, but it's fun to hear. So, yeah, with that in mind, then maybe crank on it a bit. Cool. Maybe get get some higher ratio and smack it a little bit. See what that see what that does. Again, the idea here is matched pair of 1176s with a cleaner transformer than you would get from 1176. Cool. Okay, let's check it out. That's fun. So a fun thing uh, that I'm noticing on it is it's, it's opposite of an 1176 in terms of where fast and slow are on the, uh, Attack. Uh, you, you mean the dir yeah the direction yeah yeah the direction of the knob because normally 1176 7 is the fastest attack on here 0 right. is the fastest attack and yeah as you would expect it to be but 1176s are a little bit backwards <laughs> yeah so and another fun thing since this is sounding good the more we smash it i kind of i i kind of like it um this nonlinear button is really over the top but you can try that one and then and then take that out. Just let people hear that. And then take that out. And then you can go over to the Crane Song head and play with the harmonics there. I particularly like the first two knobs, which is the triode and the pentode. Yeah. Personally, less in love with the tape processing, but um, you know, you can once once you get it going, just give those a a spin. You know, maybe up to well, you'll you, know, you do what do what you like. Okay, cool. So I'm going to, um, I, we're fairly reserved in this setting right now. So before I go and, um, crank on the, the, do the nonlinear thing and everything, let's just go listen to these, these guys over here and then we'll come back. Okay. Sweet. Nice. They are interactive. Oh, tell me about that real quick. Well, they're interactive. So, I mean, it's on drums, it's a little trickier to hear. We'll, we'll do it again if we go to another uh, vocal or instrument or something, yeah. bass or something. But yeah, they, they, they interact. So, you know, 510, if you did that, is different than five five zeros. The the triode behaves differently when you bring the pentode up to five. So I see. Okay. So yeah. you, you know, you, and again on drums, this maybe not the best thing. We should have done it before. That's my mistake. I should have thought of it on the vocal. But but this is a very nice treatment. And again, for for mix purposes or mastering, I I barely ever would touch this. I would leave it one one zero for everyday use. Mm -hmm. But for, for the fun we're having here with stems, it's like. A, it's a really nice color and again it's going digital in digital out at the very end of the chain so um it's it's an it's it's just pops it out of the speakers with nice harmonics that you can only get from from this hardware and again we're not we're not converting with this we're just using it as a digital box so it's digital in digital out but it's very special yeah okay great so let me just push on this a little bit more we'll see if we find something fun or if we can just kind of hear those colors and then we'll check out the non-linear thing here we go okay, and, if, and if not or maybe when we're done just go back to the vocal real quick and roll that up so people can hear that on a vocal great okay here we go
You know, it's really fun on that setting is I started hearing some of the ringing of the toms and just the ambience of the room kind of coming into play. There's a little bit more texture on it. Um, so that's, that's a fun one to have. Yeah. That's basically, that's basically it. It's, it's a very nice harmonic generator. Yeah. Okay, cool. So I'm going to put these guys back at one. Let's go check out the overstayer. I'll play uh same thing. So two bars and then I'll pop in non linear. Here we go. Just because I want to have fun. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, you gotta you gotta take it to eleven so you know yeah. what the eleven is, right? Yeah. That's great. Um, I love the sound of that. Even even smashing. Um, this thing is really really unique to me. And uh, since you showed me this thing, I started started looking online for these a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's again. It's it's eleven seventy six goodness without going quite so far into crazy land, and it's and it's matched yep. left to right. So that's a really that's a really cool piece. And again, it plays well with the Elysia Alpha style compression. Mm -hmm. So you know, it's cool on its own. But again, the the beauty of the chain is these things are all friends. You know, they all do different things that complement each other. Right. Right. And and back when we were more subtle, you were getting a bit of both. Yeah. You know, that's like, that sounds like a record. And then you can slam it if you want this kind of effect, of course. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Well, uh, let's go over to, um, so do you want to go to that vocal real quick and just play with those, those, uh, yeah, we could just hit it real quick. You had a preset for it. So you could yeah. pull the preset up and then we could, we could just, just bring up the, the crane song on the, on the harmonics. Okay, great. So this is this is just the insane wizardry that's going on with Chris over at Access Analog here. So I'm going to come in and I believe I called it, looks like I saved a previous one too. So bring this one back and then Chris's yeah. robots at work there. Bring it it's, all, it's all back where it was, which again, I wish I, I, wish I had here. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, and if if you were sitting next to Chris right now, you would hear click 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 click, and all the knobs turning and everything. It all happens like you know almost instantaneously. Yeah. So yeah, so hit the vocal and then roll those up. Okay, awesome, cool. And you guys can kind of hear this too, actually. Um, for we'll see if I can make it do it, but you can almost hear the um, the individual pieces kind of popping in and out. Yeah, the Fairman, uh, you know, the Fairman is, is you're going to hear switch noise, and if you roll through the gain, you're going to hear a little, you know, there's. Yeah, it it's it's not uh, invisible, you know, but that's part of the beauty of analog. Yeah, very cool. Okay, so uh, we're going over to the crane song, and we're gonna play around with these settings. So I'm gonna go a little later in the vocal, um, and let's check this out. Here we go. I know that I'll never be free. Ah, jealousy. Oh, fill my hand with lies should keep me paralyzed. I know that I'll never be free. Oh, jealousy. Oh, jealousy. Oh, jealousy. Oh. Never be free. Oh, jealousy.
Very interesting. Yeah, definitely interactive. Um, one thing I heard on the tape thing, it was like there was a um, high mid presence that kind of came out, which was... Yeah, it gets out of hand pretty quickly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right. I, don't, I don't love the tape. I never have. I mean, I think I think for, for um, general stem use, you know, between one and four on triode pentode is probably going to be where most people find the the sound that they're after yeah uh, yeah it's a, it's a subtle thing we have to keep in mind we're we're you know we're at the very end of the chain we're just we're just doing a little a little harmonic enhancement there in the yeah. digital world i was like not nah, smash <laughs> so <laughs> yeah smash. uh so somebody in the chat asked for a slower vocal so i'm going to um uh Play. slower vocal like a ballady kind of vocal or something yeah which this this song's uh, a lot slower feeling in the verse so i'm gonna just go ahead and play this one because it's slower here we go i think i lost audio from it so let me uh i'm gonna reset our buffer guy here Oop. yeah Maybe needs a I got disconnected. Hold on. Here we go. Presets. Let's go back to our brandy vocal. It's not even a big deal because I've got a preset. All right. Here we go. You take your knife and you cut it through my heart. Oh, jealousy. Deep in my soul, ripping it apart. Make me think when they maybe never have been dead. Oh, you overpower me so instinctively, no matter where I run. Yeah, so definitely adding some texture and stuff, and yeah, it gets gets pretty crazy uh, when you push it all the way. Imagine that. Yeah, I mean, again, my recommendation for this particular chain is triode pentode between one and five. And yeah, but you know, it's 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 a taste thing. Right. I just, I, I just I don't love how the tape knob interacts with the chain, but you know, whatever. Cool. Okay, so um, let's go over. So we have a couple other um, things that we could do. So we could do the hip hop drum thing. Um, we could do a different sounding vocal if we want to. We could go to a stereo mix. Uh, let's do the, the stereo stuff last. So cool. we could do, let's do the <clears throat> more of electronic drum thing. Okay, cool. So. And how about, how about people in the chat? What does what does anybody want to hear? Yeah, guys, let us know. Um, yeah, so Mars needs Max said it sounded great at high ratios um, on there. Edson says less is more on the Crane song. Um, let me pull up our hip hop. I'm with I'm with that one. Yeah, <laughs> I was just like I want to hear it. Okay. Yeah, you gotta you gotta go to eleven to you know you gotta break it before you can turn it down. Yeah. So here you push quite a bit. That's okay. All right. Yeah, that that loop should be pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to bypass our plugin first, and we'll just check out what's going on with these drums, and then. See. And on the crane song, on the crane song for program material for me, like I almost never leave one one zero. So. Right. I'll put that out. But again, for stems, I think, you know, one to five, you're good on the tribe pentode. Cool. One to four, maybe. All right. So we're going to do some hip hop drums and then we're going to go to um, some stereo mix stuff. Uh, again, we've got uh, my friends, Ghost Soul. They're in the house, they're in the chat. Uh, and we're going to play some examples from them. Unreleased track, too, which is cool. So before we do that, this is from Light Shine Through. This is a song um, with. Jared Evans, this is from a start to finish that's on Pure Mix. Uh, you guys can check that out at puremix.com. Here we go. All 
Yeah, pretty heavy kick. I'm just going to bring that down in the mix a little bit. And let's listen one more time dry. Cool. So there's our, our dry version, and now we'll bring in the desk. Nice. And I'm bringing up your starting point. What are you thinking for this one? Uh, Dante kicked me off. P.S. I don't. I didn't have. I don't have audio through my uh, studio speakers. Uh, uh, but um, yeah, I mean, let's start again. The 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 overstayer fet sound is really kind of a extra thing. So let's leave it off. Cool. Uh, and let's just start with, you know, get getting the alpha going and seeing what EQ things we're gonna like. Awesome. Okay. So, just, but, again, uh, but again, from this, from this, from my preset, you know, my this is my starting point preset. Mm -hmm. You're you're gonna get a really sweet enhancement just right out of the, right out of the gate. You know. Yeah. So I'll listen to that for a second before I I do anything on there. Um, so let me do that. Let's so for everybody's memory, I'm gonna bypass again, and then I'll connect to the desk and I'll play it without talking. Here we go. Cool. Okay, so I'm just going to play with the attack and release times a little bit. Uh, you saw me roll up the sidechain frequency a bit pretty high. I'm um, just trying to let that kick pass through a little bit. And let's see what we got. Here we go. Yeah, and you can also, um, there's a feed forward on there, which I don't use in the mastering world, but could be fun in stems world. That's going to be a little different tone to the, to the compression. Cool. Uh, and then there's also a soft clip feature, which again, I don't use but for stems could be really fun uh yeah. just a little bit of soft clip so keep those in mind as well okay cool and it does parallel uh if you look at the bottom there's the compressed which is on and the direct is there and there's a percentage knob again i don't do parallel but it just to point out to folks you can do parallel as well cool i click that direct knob and then playing with the mix okay great so yeah, I'll just play a little bit more. Here we go. You got it in parallel.
Yeah, it's pretty fun. So you can get a little bit more of like a older school kind of sounding bottom end on there with the soft clip and yeah, it's you know, kind of soften it. Yeah, a little a little goes a long way, you know, a little of everything, a little spice here and there. Yeah, and this guy also has a transformer that's that's you know switchable in and out too, right? It does. Again, I don't love that transformer. I think it's not. It's like many transformers in modern gear, which is sort of not really what I call real transformer. You know, the 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 overstayer has a real transformer in it. This is more of a modern transformer, which is I, I would I don't think it's that cool. You've got a you've got a real transformer to just click on in the engage button of the overstayer, but right. it's there. There's also auto fast uh, attack and release at the top. Um, we've got mid side EQ options. We haven't engaged that because we're not doing program, but we'll, <laughs> we'll, get, we'll get to that. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. And we haven't, we haven't played with really much at all. And you know, the, the fairman has a low mid boost, which is really nice. The high shelf is beautiful. If you've got something dark, that high shelf is a beautiful thing. Yeah. Uh, the, the focus right is there to do, you know, clean things. Um, yeah. The, the the thing that the thing that plugins will never do, and this isn't, you know, this isn't like an opinion. This is just the hard physics of it. Plugins will never be able to do well high shelf boosting that's really beautiful um, and transformers. So that's you know, there's a, there's a beautiful transformer option here with the overstayer. There's there's a really really nice high shelf boost in the Fairman, and those are, you know, things you just you can't get never mind the whole chain right right um actually i'd love to ask you about your cable experience with the elysia okay yeah so the thing here was you know i wanted this rig to be equal sonically to what i use every day and because equipment is not the same over time it took three months of you know sort of a being and, and having that server rack that Chris is sitting next to outside of my room and having it, you know, the ability to switch between the two. And the thing I found with the new alphas is the new alphas are the same circuit, but the parts have changed, of course, and it changed the sound. So a new alpha compared to my alpha is a bit more, I would say, kind of gray on the top, not, not, quite, not quite the zing. Mm -hmm. uh, when mine was, I mean, I have serial number one. So when it kind of first came out, it was really super zingy. There was a real speed mm -hmm. to the top. It was, it was almost too much. And I talked to Ruben and he ended up sending me a little, uh, I think it's a little DC uh, cable from the power supply that had a, a resistor. And we kind of knocked down some of the speed. So mine got less speedy, but n the new ones didn't have enough speed. So the solution to that, because I have good relationship with Acoustic Zen, which is a guy named Robert Lee, who's a cellist who makes great cables that are expensive, but not crazy land. They're not $5,000 pairs. They're like $500 pairs. And, and I use his cables in my chain. So I said, hey, can you make me an 8020 and put some silver in it? Mm -hmm. So copper 80, silver 20, something he doesn't do. And he was very nice. He said, sure, Brian. So he sent me one pair uh, one meter each XLR, and then I asked for another pair. So, in and out of the alpha in this in this rig is that eighty twenty silver, and that that little bit of silver just put that put that zing that matched it with with my serial number one, which is really a part of the beauty of it to me. It's a very beautiful top end, yeah, in a in a solid state way. You know, the Fairman has a beautiful tube top end, but so yeah, so that that was part of it you know it was cables and um uh, it was tubes and at one point it was power cords i did change a couple power cords on these things and you know it got it got it, it took a while to get down to the 
to the point where it's like 99% the same of what I use every day. Yeah. And it, and, and maybe better. I mean, I think I, I kind of liked it better to be honest. Cause it's a, uh, I don't know. It just, maybe because it's newer, maybe because random things, who knows, but it's, it's very, 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 very close. I could, I could switch in and out. I could use it if I needed to. Yeah. And so, and so when we're doing stems, it's like, ah, oh, it's a home run, you know, it's so easy. Yeah. It's easy. It's easy for me. It's an easy chain for me to use for mastering. I use it every day, but for stems, it's like, come on, it's such a home run. Yeah. Very cool. Um, okay. So the, uh, I want to show Chris again here. I'm just going to bring up, um, bring bring up chris hold on here let's spotlight yep hold on i gotta pin him uh boom we can get the way they hear me and see me at the same time yeah that's the goal hmm i've got you pinned however uh chris go ahead and talk a little bit all right yeah can you hear me yes we can hear you and I'm just trying to get you on. I'm fighting with Zoom, which is very fun. So there we go. All right, I've got you, Chris. Awesome. Great. Yeah. So I wanted to I wanted to just show this again. Um, and Brian, you can you can also talk through this. But basically, I've got the I've got the rig up on the screen here. Um, and the process for you of doing this, you had this rig in your studio on the other side of your wall, right? And you were you know running things through each of these and going back and forth. And talk about that a little bit. Uh, sorry, you are muted. Hold on. There. Sorry, I asked Chris, you know, what does he have? I got the server rack that he uses. Mm -hmm. I set it up here, you know, from top to bottom is the chain. And then just over a period of months went through it, you know, A, Bing, tweaking, tweaking, tweaking. Then I send it to him. And then he spent the last year or so going through and, and getting everything hooked up, getting it all working. It's 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 quite a thing. I mean, this has never been done before that you could that you could have, you know, these kind of like full on mastering rigs, you know, um, he's, he's got quite an interesting ability there, you know? Um, yeah. and, uh, yeah, so, and he's, he's sitting next to it. So on, he's got a, he's got, uh, pretty much everything he can fit to, to control every knob and button possible. You know, we didn't do every single one every time, but we did all the ones that we, that we could. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, so that was that was kind of the A B process was this rig was actually in your room and you were, you know, listening to that rig, listening to your current rig that's in your desk, and then kind of A Bing and going back and forth. So it's just Yeah, I, I I wanted to be able to use it like if I needed to travel and there was a need for a recall or a project, if I happened to be away from the studio, which by the way almost never happens, but mm -hmm. uh at at the time, you know, my mom passed away last year. I thought maybe if she got older and got sick, I might spend some time with her. And she ended up, you know, she ended up getting sick and dying very quickly. So that, that never happened, but that was kind of my idea was it started out to be a rig for me. And then it became, well, we should put it in the cloud for people. Yeah. And, and that's where we are now. Yeah. Very cool. Awesome. Yeah. Sorry about your loss there. Um, okay. So uh, people are asking for stereo material. Over bring there. on the stereo material. Okay. I'm going to bring Brian back and let's go over. So here we go back to Pro Tools and we're going to do a song. Um, while I pull this up here, we have a question from Eric Sumo. And Eric says, when using this chain, what's your recommendation for problem solving EQ? Um, I mean... If, if you really have a, a, a big problem, I would stick a plug in in front of the chain. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you can use the, the, the Fairman is meant to be a boost EQ. It's broad, like all, like, you know, all, all tube EQs. It's quite broad. Um, the focus right can do some notch cutting and you can certainly, um, if you bring up the focus right there, Mark, you can see that, you know, it's, it, it's a very comprehensive, parametric so you can do some real sharp cues and you can do some things there mm -hmm. um so there's a lot of there's a lot of options there but you know we're so spoiled now where we live in the digital world where every single frequency and every single shape of you know it, it, it's all an option to us so you can always just put a plug in in front of the chain um and do something really dramatic you know that's the only 
the only thing you might ever want to add would be like some really clean, dramatic EQing. Mm -hmm. um, but, but you can, you know, you can do quite a bit here with the focus, right? Awesome. Okay, great. Uh, so let's, uh, let's talk about this. So, um, shout out to my friends in Go Soul. Uh, guys, be sure to check them out. They gave us two songs to use for this. Um, the first one we're going to listen to is called Life Awake. That's available now on Spotify. And the next one is unreleased coming from their next EP. These are both final mixes that were sent to me by the band. They're not masters. So um, that's what we're going to be tweaking today. So guys, thank you. I believe they're in the chat. Thank you for joining, guys. And uh, thanks for letting us use your music. Awesome. Yeah, so let's... Um pick a pick a point like uh pick a loop that's towards the sort of louder bit of the track okay and let's just listen to that naked and then we'll put the chain in okay cool so i'll uh take the chain out completely here let me just disconnect from this plugin well you can just bypass or that either one there we go all right here we go chains will come Cool. Nice. Um, I'm still on the laptop, but I can still hear what's going on. So let's just pull up the um, pull up the my preset, if you will, okay. and then um, and then let's go to the Fairman. And uh, yeah, let's leave those. Those are fine. Or maybe maybe the high boost. Bring that down to 15k. Uh, just drop it down one notch. yep and then on the alpha um i would say um maybe nothing so let's just play it now let's, let's hear what it sounds like Okay, so um, if you click on the alpha, the compressed button on the bottom, that is going to turn off the mid, the mid part of the signal. So do that for me. Okay, hold on. I'm trying to find my mouse, and I think oh. uh, we were listening with your mic open on that last one. But uh, oh, my, my mistake, my mistake. Okay, uh, hold on. Let's well, you, we don't have to. We don't have to do that. I'm just telling people that if you want to solo the mid or side. You can simply turn off the compressed button, so yeah. that will get only the mid or only the side. So I don't need to do it; but I can hear it. So in this case, um, the uh, the EQ tilt on the side, which is the two knobs to the right, yeah, those two. So just give it a little bump, like from one six to two, which is like really one bump up. Yeah. Okay. Just that little teeny bit there, and yeah. then let's l listen to that again. Okay, cool. Here we go. Chains will come in the autumn, but every year is the same, and I always stay. Again and again, I live my life away. Again and again, I'm fine. All right, so I'm going to hit bypass just to see where we're at for everybody. And uh, so this is no chain. Here it comes. Chains will come. And hold on one second. We're not going through. Uh, stand by. I knocked it out. Okay, here it comes. Chains will come.
And we started here. Now we're here. Everybody says that you're done and it sounds like an album. <laughs> it sounds pretty good to me. Uh, let's check levels. So yeah, definitely levels. Um, do you have your, um, do you have that um, VU meter that we talked about that we set, that we prepped before the, the show um, yeah. to mirror, to mirror my meter? Do you want so this, that after or before? Yeah, let's, uh, let's see it after. Let's just check the level after. Um, this is this this meter. I actually help Pure Mix with this one by sending them pictures of of my meters working. So they they did their best to match the ballistics. It's hard to do with with the uh, you know digital meters, but this meter is very much meant to, meant to match the ballistics of what I have here. And I am calibrated very hot, so minus seven <laughs> yeah. is is zero. So let's let's just have a look at where it's at. Cool. Here we go. And then, and then what you can do, Mark, is I think uh, it sounds like it's in the ballpark, but what you can do is is you know pick a gain source. It could be the file or whatever, but just just you know two tenths up, two tenths down, roll it back and forth. And what what people will hear is that when you're pushing into the limiter, because this is being limited by the converter. Um, that's the beauty of a great converter is it's got it can take you know all kinds of signal. So as you're pushing into the into the limiting of the clipping, um, it's going to get brighter and thinner as it gets louder, even by a tenth or two tenths. And as you pull it back, it's going to get not quite so bright, not quite so harmonically distorted, and it, the low end will come in fuller and fatter. So I think where we are here sounds, sounds quite good, but just roll it up and down a couple tenths and, and let people hear that. Okay, awesome. So uh, yeah, so we'll start here. I'm starting, um, basically I've got the track feeding into an aux that has the plugin on it. And I'll, uh, I'll bring that fader up on the screen so you guys can watch me. Um, roll yeah. it up and down. And I think, I think um, also the, the focus right gain is a, is a good place to go. Where, where is the gain on the focus right? Can we take a look at that? Yeah, so that currently is at zero. Okay, let's let's push that up. Push that up to like plus 2. Okay. And then and then from there you can play with gain. Okay, cool. Here we go. Yeah, it's really, really interesting. I definitely feel it getting thinner, like you mentioned, uh, as I pushed into it, especially when I got up around a dB going into the thing. Um, it kind of lost some of the depth because it was all, you know, it's kind of smashing together and all that. But... Yeah, the, the whole the whole point of analog is leaning into the limit. And it's like, it's kind of like race car driving. You know, you go the fastest when you're when you're at what's called the limit in, 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 in car racing. And so... The, the limit of analog is just that point right between awesome and sucks. You know, like there's a there's just a line that it can be very subtle, just a tenth or two. Um, can we do a thing where you make a parallel track of this that's just totally naked and just push the gain up so we can have a gain matched A, B for people? Absolutely. Cause, cause that's that's you know, that's what I do here. Obviously, when I'm working, I've got the ability to gain match either digitally with copying a file or analog because I use the Avocet and it has one dB, you know, uh, 
offset increments, but I'll, I'll usually do a combination so I can really dial it in, you know, more, more to the hundredth or the tenth of a dB, not just a dB. Yeah. But here, you know, you can just push the, you know, push the digital file. It's okay. If the digital file clips, it's okay. Um, cool. That'll, that'll let you hear the full level of this uh, against the, the source with the, with a little with a little clipping it's okay all right let me just find a spot for for my faders here so you guys can see what's happening so i have this audio track feeding two auxes one of them is um, with analog matrix on it one is not for ab so if i um have the one on the left unmuted you guys can watch right here we're listening to access analog if i go over here we're listening to the raw um raw file and i'm going to push this fader uh, oops, sorry, I'm going to push this fader. Hold on. I've got them backwards. There we go. Uh, we'll push the Axis Analog one up, or uh, sorry, the, the raw print will come up in order to gain match. So there we go. I was right here. All right. So on the left is we're listening to Axis Analog. On the right is the raw print, and I'm just going to gain match with the fader. Yeah, and, and the access analog one make it to zero just so it's a fair. Yes. Give, give that zero. Yeah, and, and and we can bring them down if we need to, but just so people really get the full tilt level of it. Yeah. Okay. Great. Here we go. So feel okay, Brian? I have you muted. Yeah, yeah. So this is an interesting one because you know we're doing something pretty subtle here. It's a a really good mix, uh, but the the this the world of subtle still matters. And and you know we're up at uh, that RMS zero on that meter is is a minus seven. You know, mm -hmm. so it's it's kind of you know into the stupidly hot release range, and yet doesn't sound smashed and and what we've done really is just a, a little bit of brightening in through the that 3k range we've done a little mid side eq the thin the sides a bit um which is which is clarifying the punch in the middle and popping the vocal a bit and you know the harmonic color of the chain is very apparent um but if you know i'm i'm on the i'm on the laptop speakers because our, our dante is is being a brat but it sounds that sounds pretty good to me. It sounds like we're in the ballpark. Now we could, if you want, we could do another one. That's that's. Um, we'll we'll just do another of their tracks and let's see if this one is as close to target. Okay, great. Um, so uh, two ideas. One, if you want to um, go have a fight with Dante for a second, I could bring Chris up and talk about uh, the coupon that they've made for uh, the stream today. Sure. Um, what what would I do? How how would I fix that though? I'm not sure how I would. To fight with your Dante? Were you having yeah. the issue I was having? Or is it different? Oh, you know what? I I know what the problem is. Yeah, let me let me let me do it. I'll take care of it. All right, so I'm gonna mute you real quick and I'm gonna bring Chris up and we're gonna we're gonna chat. And then uh as soon as we're done with that, we're gonna go to a new Ghost Soul song. That's gonna be really fun. Uh so hold on a second here. Brian, I'm just going to stop your video and you can just turn it back on whenever you feel like you're ready. Okay. So, Chris, talk to me. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Here. Awesome. Okay, great. So, um, yeah, so you guys prepared a coupon for everybody today um, to be able to go try the rig out, right? Can you tell me about that a little bit? Yeah, that's right. So, um, at accessanalog.com, uh, you can reserve this rig 
there's there's the plugin that you've been using is downloadable and you can create a free account and download the plugin and that's free. Um, and then uh, there's a place on the website where you can reserve this rig for a specific time. And uh, once you have it reserved, you check out, then in the plugin, you connect at that time and it should show up as reserved to you and you can use the, the device to start the chain. So um, when you go to check out, we've got a coupon where you can apply a checkout and essentially get two, you can use the coupon twice and each time you use the coupon, you get to um, reserve uh, the chain for free. So you can go through the process I just described, but when you get to check out, you apply the coupon, it's called magic-garden-intro. And you just put that in the coupon box and press apply, that should get it for free. Then you can go have fun. Okay, cool. So the coupon code I'm dropping in the YouTube chat here is magic-garden-coupon, right? Magic-garden-intro. Ah, all right. Magic <laughs> dash garden dash intro. And you sent this in an email to me too, and I still got it. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Okay, so magic dash garden dash intro, and you guys can try it out um, for free, which is amazing. Uh, so we're going to talk uh, uh, some questions here in the chat. And let me see if I have anything that's directly related to um, your end, Chris. Um, while I'm searching for that and while Brian's uh, sorting out his, his speaker thing, um, do you want to tell us a little bit about where this idea came from to uh, take a bunch of amazing gear and, and put it up in racks and throw some robots on it? Uh, yeah, I guess so. It's been, it's been going for a while. It's been very hard. There's a lot of technology involved here. And so um, I guess it was about 2016 or 2015, somewhere in there when I first had this idea, and uh, you know, I have a lot of ideas that I usually can shoot down and find the problems with, but this idea just kind of stuck. And uh, I knew there were some challenges to do, but I felt like I could probably get them. So anyway, cut speed, you know, fast forward a year or two where I got it working the first time, and that was super exciting. And then all types of, of milestones since then, like doing the first preset, which is so incredible. Um, you know, just seeing all the robotics move at the same time and knowing that you now have the ability to have a preset with analog gear was uh, was pretty amazing. And then the most recent one with these chains um, is just doing a preset on a chain, which uh, if you can imagine a bunch of motors and uh, solenoids like moving all at the same time, uh, it's uh, kind of loud. And uh, so it was just really cool to set an entire chain preset. Yeah, it's pretty amazing um, when you think about it. And it's it's cool. Like, it's kind of fun when the plugin's up and you hear some of that stuff clicking in as it would if you were hitting a button on an actual piece of outboard gear. But it, it's kind of kind of like, I don't know, it, it almost like puts you more in that experience of like, oh, yeah, it's, it is real hardware or whatever. And, you know. Yeah, I guess I get used to it because I'm here near the rack all the time. And I just yeah. hear clicking and clacking all the time. Right. And people are working away. Yeah. Yeah. It's great to hear yeah, it's pretty amazing. Like that must be kind of fun when you're when you're in there working and and you know building another one of these or something, and then you hear one of them going, and you know that somebody's like running things through it, and that must be a cool experience. Yeah, and somebody like doing two presets and A being, I can hear that going on. I go to one, I go to the other, and then I go to one, and uh, yeah. of course I can't hear any audio. Right. Um, yeah. But it is fun hearing the robotic. Yeah, that's amazing. Awesome. Yeah. And you guys, you have a whole, um, do you remember the first piece of hardware that you did this with? Yeah. Um, so this was back in 2016 and 17. I had no idea if this was actually going to work with it. So I was trying to find a box that I could, you know, control that was relatively simple and relatively cheap because if it didn't work, then I was just going to sell the box and continue yeah. on with it. Um, so I bought a Norm Audio. EQPW, I think they call it, but it's their Protec version of the whole body of it. Yeah. And so I beat that thing up because, you know, things were barely working at that time, but uh, <laughs> it all worked out. Yeah. Nice. Does a robot ever get angry and just like smash things over? <laughs> like during um, the initial phases, you know, when you were figuring it all out, not with Brian's expensive gear. <laughs> right, right. 
Um, yeah, at, at certain times when we, and it was always our fault, our, our electronics or our software was, was at fault. Uh, but for the most, um, yeah, everything's been fairly smooth. It doesn't, it doesn't try to take the knob where it's not supposed to go. Right. Yeah. Awesome. Does it ever talk back to you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, not other than the clicking and clacking. <laughs> right. You're like, I don't understand that language. Just keep yelling over there. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Let's see if, uh, if Brian is ready to come back here. All right. Let me find him. Brian, I'm going to try to unmute your video and, um, and all that. So let's see. I'll ask you to start video again and let me know if you're ready. And uh, before we start on that, we're going to bring up our second song from uh, from Ghost Soul that they uh, let us use for this. But before I open it, I'm going to save another preset. Uh, and while we wait for Brian, uh, I'm going to hit Add Remove, and we'll just call this Life Awake. I'll call it 1.0, and I'll save that in case Brian wants to change some things on the second one, which I'm sure he will. Yeah, let's check it out. Again, let's go to a loud bit. Okay, awesome. Um, Brian, before we do that, there's a question in the chat, um, actually from, from Ghost Soul. Uh, he says, what are your thoughts on linked versus unlinked compression and mastering? Um, he read somebody else, ops, unlinked. Thoughts on that? Um, I go on the L2. Um, I mean, I generally, I generally work for mastering in mid side mode, but I don't necessarily use it. In other words, <clears throat> I'm, I'm in mid side mode, but I'm not necessarily doing something different on the mid and the side. It's just easier for me to start that way. Um, <clears throat> Cause what I've found is like, for example, your mix here, this is a great example. It's a very good mix, but it's very difficult. You know, part of the reason that people like me have a career is that we have great monitoring that hears things that studios can't hear. So even though this is a really great mix, the the weighting of what's on the sides is a bit heavy, mm -hmm. and and it's a it's a bit getting in the way of the punch of the kick and the bass and the center. So we did in this case a, just a subtle mid side EQ tweak using the alpha compressor, mm -hmm. and so some kind of low end tweak is almost everybody. I mean, they're very, there's very few mixers, um, no matter the skill level that aren't having some kind of minor issue on low end. And so I default to mid side mode and I use EQing on the program material and EQing on the side to do some shaping. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not sure if that answers your question, but um yeah i mean look the here's here's the thing the internet is full of trendy bullshit <laughs> there's there's a trendy thought every three months there's a trendy speaker every year mm -hmm. there's a trendy concept constantly and the thing you have to know is that those are all prozacs like those are happy pills it's the idea that there's this one secret thing and then everything's going to be awesome. Right. And it turns out it's just not that way. <laughs> there, yeah. there isn't one good idea. You know, it's always different every, I mean, I use the same chain every day and now you all can use it, but every project is different. So we really have to be flexible and, and just be in the moment with it and, and listen and, and try not to get stuck in any one concept, you know? Right. right. Yeah. Awesome. Like parallel, some people love parallel. I don't use parallel, but I wouldn't say parallel is bad for everyone. You know, it's just, mm -hmm. it, but that was a trend for a minute. It was like, oh, every, everything was parallel and all the hardware was parallel. And, for you a know, we, <laughs> for a long minute, you know. Yeah. Uh, and, and, but there was, there was a time before that, right? There was a time before that was a, that was a trend. And then the same with speakers. And so, you know, respectfully, all of these ideas that come and go that are like, wow, you know, it's like, eh, they're all just possibilities. You know, we have to, we have to just listen and play with it and try it and see how it works. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So, uh, 
I saved that last song as a preset and I'm going to load your regular preset or do you want me to go with the one that we have? Oh uh, yeah, just start with this the um where we were. Yes, where we were is fine. Okay, awesome. Here we go. Since you've got your faders there, let's just listen to this one uh on your, you know, just on your dry, your naked fader. With the with the game with the game boost. With the game boost, here we go. That never happens, Pro Tools. Here we go. Cool. Okay, I've got my speakers happening. Thank you. Um, Thank you, Dante. Thank you. Listen to. Um, give give me since we're still at the same setting. Um, give me the other one so I can just hear it in the room real quick. Just give me like ten seconds. Okay. So here comes the desk version. Okay. I have my mic open. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> Did your mic or mine? Yeah, let me just do that one more time because I have my mic open. So we'll mute our okay. mics and uh, do, do, dry, do. and then I'll flip it over to the desk. Okay. Here we go. it's in the ballpark um we might tweak it a little bit can you give me a bit with a vocal just yes just like four bars with a vocal let me find one here this this looks like it might have vocal Okay, let's just do a couple things to this one now that I've got the speakers on. Do you want so, a vocal somewhere? Do you want me to search for another spot? No, no, that's perfect. That's fine. Um, so on the on the since the alpha's open, mm -hmm. on that uh, mid side EQ, mm -hmm. just go two point two and then. Um, do I need to link this, or you want me? To mm, link no. Okay. Just bump that up to two point two, which is three o'clock, basically. Yeah. And then and then bump the uh, the the frequency point just to the right of it, so just the knob to the right of the gain. Yeah, that one. Just bump that up a little bit to like three four hundred, a little more. Okay. Right there. Okay. Just give me like four bars of that one. Okay. Okay. That was dry. Here comes the uh, access analog. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Just, just give me the processed one. Okay. So let's do this. Um, go to the ferryman, if you could, please. Mm -hmm. And on the low boost frequency point, drop that down to 65. And on the high mid boost at 35, uh, push it up one click, so one and a half on the gain. Oh, just oh, the gain. Okay. Sorry, the gain, yeah. Yeah, 3.5 is good, and then the gain just up one. Okay. Just, no, no, not that far. Oh, just up just, one just click. one click. Yes, perfect. There you go. Yeah, there we go. Sorry. One little click. Okay, let's hear that one. Okay, here we go.
Go again. Okay, uh, just for fun, let's turn, uh, let's take that low boost down another two clicks. So instead of 65, take it down to 55. There you go. Let's try that. Reflected through the water in the cracks underneath the house, coming through the door. You are muted. Hey. Is this the new track or the old one? This is the new track. Oh, okay. This is the new track. Okay. I'm confused. Okay. So um, let's be more aggressive. So to the focus, right? Okay. Um, the, uh, the gain on the, uh, the first, uh, the first gray one on the left, mm -hmm. that bump, just pull that down to like minus one third. So be one click below yeah like right there there you go yep. that's what we need and then the one next to it just make that one flat so it's at it's at plus a third yeah there you go okay let's try that Okay, a little more aggressive on the cutting so that um, both of those, just if you would, just take them down like a third of a dB, like one dot. Yeah, well, so fine. these are like 0.3 dB. Huh? Yeah, those first three are, are a third and then they go to half. So those are actually in, in dBs. One third, one third. Cool. Then you're at one, you're at minus one and a half, et cetera. And then on the, let's go to the Fairman. And. Just for fun, let's take that high shelf boost point, which is at 15, mm -hmm. and let's make it 14. And then let's click it from plus one to plus 1.5, which is actually correct. Okay, let's try that. Yeah, so, I mean, we could spend a little more time on it. It needs some more aggressive kind of low cutting. But just for fun, so people can hear the shelf. Um, well, let's do, let's do this. Let's, let's turn the low, the low boost on the Fairman off. So click those off. Okay. Uh, let's click them both just in case, uh, just to make sure the robot's good. And then, um, and then let's play with, uh, as we play through the track now, the high boost so play with pushing that gain more and then play with bringing that shelf point down so that so people can really hear the how that high shelf works okay awesome i'm going to start with it off just so i can hear where we're at yeah, just to your own taste you know cool. okay i'm going to give myself a little bit more of the song here we go
Okay, tell me your thoughts. Uh, yeah, just so I would say just um, um, click both of those high frequencies off and on just to make sure those are tracking. And then just boost more so people can hear the mid boost and the top boost okay. as it's playing through. Yeah, both both of those gains just boost a bit more. Cool. And that low, the low end's still bugging me. So if you would go to the focus right and uh, pull down that lowest one, just pull that down a little further. This and one. then, yeah. yeah, that's fine. And then while you're at it, the third band over that's set, I think at 560 or 500 something, just pull that down by one click. Just give that a third dip. Yep, yeah, that's good. All right, let's do that. Cool. So now as you, as you boost that high mid and that high shelf, and people can really hear how nice those are. Cool. I'll go pretty extreme on it then. Here we go. Yeah, have some fun. Reflected through the water and the cracks underneath the house, coming through the door. Awesome. Uh, thoughts? Yeah, I mean, it's streaming MP3 and whatever. It's hard for me to hear, but uh, yeah. hopefully that gives people the idea of how nice those are. Yeah. Awesome. Um, okay, so, yeah, and it's crazy to me, too, like, just moving the frequency points around. There's stuff that I like at each one of those things, and um, that's it's not something that I, I haven't ever really had that experience with a digital EQ where I've, I've just like moved the frequency point and been like, oh, there's a really cool flavor there. Not like a um, I'm fixing a problem, but like a flavor. Kinda. Yeah, the, the whole the whole point of analog is that it's just good news all around. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's 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 all it's all good news. It's a question of what what sounds you want um, on this one. Try one more thing for me. Go to the alpha compressor yeah. to the to the mid side EQ and push the frequency point up to 500. So, so it's at three o'clock. Okay. Just push that a little bit. Okay, nice. And now let's, let's AB this with this, with the naked file. So people can hear where we're at. And so I, so I can hear where we're at because I yeah. forget what it was like. I think okay. it was quite a bit of low end in, in the mix. Great. Um, we have some questions about the LT. I just want to let you guys know that we're going to get to them in a minute here. Um, uh, about release times and stuff like that. So we'll, we'll talk about that in a second, Eric. And here we go. So I'm going to start with the desk version and then I'll go back to the, to the raw file. Here we go. Awesome. Okay. Do you want that again, Brian? Did it come through? Yeah, that seems good. Let's maybe just push the uh, push the gain of the of the of the file itself. Mm -hmm. Let's go another. I don't know. Let's go three tenths up on the actual file. Three to three tenths to a half dB. 
of the of the file coming into the chain. We'll go crazy. I'm going to go a full half DB. Oh, a full half DB. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Feeling wild today. All right. Here we go. Yeah, let's push it a little more. All right. Go go, go up another half. Let's see what happens. Woo. A whole DB. Here we go. Yeah, so you know, at this point, you could save that one. Then you could load the other one, and you go check that one. I think the level here is is still lower than the other one, but but you get the idea. You get the idea. Can I AB that DB difference for everybody? Sure. Okay. Cool. So, um, whatever you want to do. Yeah. Here's a uh, here's zero. So I'm just playing the file back at the regular level. And then I'm going to push it up. I'll stop and then I'll push it up a dB. Here we go. Awesome. Do you like the push? On there? Yeah, it's better pushed. I I, yeah. I think it probably still needs to come up compared to the other one. But I, I you know, if I was gonna, if this was a mastering job for me, I would spend a little more time on the low end to do some little notch cutting, mm -hmm. and then maybe do a little uh, a little vocal bump range. But you know, we're in the ballpark. It, it, it shows the it shows the the sound of the chain. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so those those moves would those happen on the desk or they would happen uh digital eq or uh either either depending you know i might i might use a digital eq just do a mid-side eq push of like a vocal pop mm -hmm. maybe just swing around and find a little vocal pop and just pop the vocal a bit but i, I would do that as a last resort first thing is to, to deal with the a little bit more in the low end you know there's some there's still some low end stuff to deal with but we're getting close yeah Awesome. Okay, so uh, should I load up our other preset and take a listen and just see where that one's at comparatively? Or? Sure. Yeah, yeah, if you want to do that, sure. Yeah. All right, so we're back on Life Awake. We'll go back to uh, the other song here. Here's where this one is. Cool. Yeah, they they both they both still have some low end congestion, but you know we're we're if it was a job I'd spend a little more time on it. But we're in the we're getting in the ballpark, and people can hear that the level that's possible is really easy. It's really easy to get good level that feels really dynamic. It doesn't feel clamped at all. We didn't compress anything here. We're getting some squash from from clipping the converter, which is the best limiter in the world. is a is a really good analog converter and this one is maybe the best converter ever made in my opinion yes mm -hmm. um and so it clips really well so um yeah. that's what we're that's that's part of what we're playing with and as we bring as we brought if we brought the low end a little cleaner then we could actually push it a little more mm -hmm. without you know quite the same distortion but it's all about 
again playing with the limit or playing at the limit you know or yeah. driving at the limit if you're lewis hamilton or max verstappen it's all about the edge between too too little and too much yeah and i'd like to uh, oh sorry go ahead no 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 i'm done oh all right i was just i was going to show everybody um if you've seen pure mix videos you're used to kind of seeing our our super meter guy so i just want to show you where it's sitting at and uh I just think that what you said, like there's no compression involved here is, is a pretty awesome thing. So here it is. And I'm not endorsing playing video games by going for loud numbers or whatever at all. Um, it just showing that it's, it is crazy to me how you achieve this level. Um, there's not a lot of compression going on and, you know, sometimes yeah, video games, yeah, I mean, you know, no, chasing no, that. So. Compression is really um, not a level device. So mm -hmm. we should never be using compression for level. Level is very easy if you know how to eq and limit in a combo so level for me is quite easy with this chain um, i don't compress for level ever mm -hmm. i will compress for groove i'll compress to, to sort of usually i will just barely compress something with the alpha that's the most common thing and i'll just barely grab it just to tickle it and have it bounce off a little bit and get a little more groove with just a touch of compression. If something is crazy, crazy dynamic, sort of like that first vocal we worked on, mm -hmm. and, um, then, you know, um, yes, then I'll, I'll, I'll lean into the alpha more because it can handle that very easily. Or if it needs color, I'll put in the transformer of the overstayer and give it that, um, sort of coming out of an analog desk vibe that the, that that transformer color uh, provides, even without, even without the FET, you know, you don't have to smack it to get the color. Right. So where, it's, where it's set in the preset is a neutral gain position. So the engage button just gives you the transformer. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Um, man, uh, guys. Question? If anybody has questions in the chat, um, let us know. There was a question about the um, the L2. So let me find that really quickly here. Uh, that was from Eric. And I'm just looking for his name. Not yeah, the, the, the L2, is that a fixed setting? It is yeah. at my fixed setting that I use constantly. I never touch it. Yeah, I think he was asking about... Uh, okay, so release times. So how is the L2 set up? I might have missed that. Um, do you use fixed release time? So yeah, sorry, go ahead. Uh, it, it is set not on auto release, and it's actually at 0.11. Uh, that one says 10 and 12. It's actually at 11 and 11. It goes to 11. Nice. Uh, but yeah, it's 1.4, half dB down. And, and and you will get if you're if you want to master with this, uh, you will get over sample peaks and they don't matter. Another internet idea that showed up like you know three years ago and bringing you full screen. Wait, go <laughs> say that again. <laughs> like say, like I say this again. Yeah. Okay, uh, you will see true peak over zero, there will be intersample uh, peaks. That is another of those trendy internet ideas that became a giant thing that people care about that is completely effing irrelevant. Mm. It's not important. The, the, the state of technology is such that that is only an intellectual concern. The the, the future of Codex is always happening. Things are, things are happening constantly. And that is such an insignificant and unimportant factor. I actually kind of like the sound of it. I like what it does to MP3s, mm -hmm. but it's not something that matters. Like it's, like it's like cables, like cables matter to me because I've done everything else. Mm. Uh, 
but something like the those peaks it's like come on no it's mm -hmm. so irrelevant it's so irrelevant you know m most of the problems with music are are big and then we we focus on one little thing we're like this is the secret it's like no it's not the secret mm -hmm. your your vocals out of tune your drummer sucks like those things matter yeah <laughs> the the things going over zero is, and that doesn't matter and and in this case they're just they're just barely popping through you know that they're not like slammed up above zero in some sort of damaging way for future. Yeah. Okay. I mean, there, um, there are, there are mastering people that I won't name that I look at what they do and I think, well, that's, that's more, that's further than I would go. Right. So there, there are people that go further than I would go in that category. I, I do some, I would say conservative over peaks. Yeah. Okay. Um, there's a question from, Ohad uh, asking, is this chain also good for electronic music with heavy kick and bass? Yeah, we can pull one up if we have it. This chain is good for everything. This, I, 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 you're welcome to go to magicgardenmastering.com and take a look at some of my credits there. Those are only the more known people, but I have 400 clients, sometimes 500 clients a year. I work in every style and I use this chain every day. Now for that kind of music, I'm probably not gonna turn on the overstayer mm -hmm. because it's uh, the overstayer lends itself more towards organic music, more natural, more the, the sound of coming out of a desk. That's that transformer sound or that FET smack. Mm -hmm. So I, I wouldn't use it, I'd keep it. I'd keep it the normal chain, which is not that. My, normally I don't use that. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, it, it works for everything. That was the whole point of the work I put in 20 years ago to to get the chain going, and and I attribute, you know, a lot of my success to the fact that nothing that anyone does in mastering sounds like this chain. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes, you got to know how to drive it, of course. Yeah. And, and but the chain helps. You know, you just you run stuff through it, and you're off to the races. Yeah. Um, that's the that's the beauty of it. Um, I want to look at uh, the just two two important things here. Um, just in the user interface uh, thing, yep. these uh, the Pacific Microsonics. This GUI is not interactive. This is a uh, um, static, correct? So yeah, it's just there for to show you what's happening. That one and the MyTech and the Waves, those three are just pictures. Yeah, so I can't change word clock because that would be bad, <laughs> right? No, no, but the but the 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 rig is set up to take the incoming word clock that you have so sure. that's a that's a big part of the programming that that chris spent a lot of time on yeah. was getting it to to be able to be flexible so as opposed to doing sample rate conversion or doing different approaches mm -hmm. the integrity of the chain is maintained with with the the different sample rates right and this um this is so it's set to external sample rate. So, for example, uh, if I'm running at 48, then this is running at 48, or if I'm 96, this is 96. Yeah, yeah. This is just a picture. Yeah, yeah. Okay. These are just pictures. So, MyTech, Pacific Microsonics, Waves L2, they're there for visual representation of like here is the signal flow that's happening. Yes. And... Correct. Left to right is the signal flow. The optional thing is the overstayer. Those three are just pictures. Yeah, cool. And um, yeah, as you just pointed out with, you know, talking about level and clipping and the sound of these converters, uh, they're in the chain because you feel that they are, you know, as important, at least as, you know, the other pieces in the gear for the for the sonic picture that's happening, right? So oh, yeah, 100%. I mean, look, uh, to kind of explain, over the years, I used to play Beat the Chain Month. So every December when it would get kind of quiet around Christmas, Christmas and New Year's, I would get some gear and I would try it. And, you know, nothing, nothing, nothing worked. I mean, I did add the overstayer maybe four years ago. So that's the only thing I've ever added. But mm -hmm. these are all point to point wired with acoustics uh, and cables. And if, for example, the L2 breaks, which it did once, I thought, oh, it's fine. It's just the old L2. It's no big deal. And I just, I couldn't work, couldn't work without it because the thing that it does, that pop it does in the vocal range and the mid range is I can't get that through an EQ or any other effect, you know. Yeah. Um, the tubes that are in the Fairman, you know, if I didn't have in that uh, output gain section, I mentioned before the Amperex Bugle Boy 
uh, late 50s, early 60s. It's a very specific sounding EF86. Mm -hmm. If I don't have that in there, I'm not happy. I can't, I can't work. So th this is an, a, 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 to say it's incredibly refined, it would still be an understatement. Right. It's, it's, it's all been gone through so that it's just easy to use for me every day on anything. Awesome. Um, I want to play a game and chat room. I want you guys to fess up everybody who has reverb.com, Sweetwater, Vintage King, or anything open right now. Let us know in the chat. <laughs> it's pretty funny when you start going through this. It's like, what about this converter? Let's see where those are. <laughs> yeah. yeah, those converters you can't buy. The, the company stopped selling them 20 some years ago, not because they couldn't sell more, but because the world went to surface mount parts. And so these are through hole parts, meaning they're big, hot, heavy parts. It's not teeny little surface mounts. Everything we buy today is surface mount. Even the, the Rupert Neve stuff is very different from the old Neve stuff. It's a, it's a whole different technology. Mm -hmm. So the, the sound of surface mount is not as good. Um, the, and they couldn't keep up with the parts changes. So the converter was you know $24,000 back in the day. And they could have sold a few more, but they did the responsible thing, which was stop selling them and stockpile parts. Mm. And there's only one guy that can fix them. He is not, his name's Muhammad Khan. He's in Northern California. He actually hand built the last 50 that they made. He built them all himself, one person, one box. And he's the only repair guy. So uh, hopefully he will live forever. <laughs> he's younger than me. Um, but uh, heaven forbid something happened to his his hands or his mind. Um, I own seven of these converters just in case. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Those, those, that's my, <laughs> that's my insurance. Yeah. I can't work without, I can't work without any of this chain really, yeah. but the converters are impossible. I mean, you can get one, you could, you know, you could offer me 25 grand. I might sell you one, but <laughs> they're hard to come by. Yeah. We'll talk after the show. <laughs> yeah, right. Fairman, right. Fairman, you know, you can find them occasionally. Um, you know, I've got I've got the one I use here. We've got the one in the rig. And then I have another spare that I just got that was um, my friend Casey that is Bricasti. That's Brian Casey, Tim. Yeah. So Casey reached out to me. He had a brand new one that he'd never used. And he sold that to me, which was very nice. Awesome. Uh, but, but yeah, the overstayer you can buy. The focus right's been highly modified, so you wouldn't you wouldn't want to get into that. You know, those are five grand, and I put another three thousand in the mods. Alpha compressors you can buy; they're what twelve thousand or something. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's not you know, it's not really that kind of a thing. It's it's about the sum of the parts being right. greater than the parts. Right, right. Yeah, a, a different D to A would ruin the whole thing. You know, right. I, I've tried. You know, it just it's like nope, it's gone. Mm -hmm. It's all gone. Yeah, that's amazing. And uh, that's kind of the cool thing about like you've talked in the past, your desk is your instrument, you know, and, and it really it really is, you know, with each part being so uh, significant in the chain where you kind of only have the overstayer that you're like, maybe, no, maybe, you know, and then. Yeah, that's kind of it. Yeah. You know, that's it. Or, or maybe a couple records I did with Chad Blake where because Chad mixes through four digital limiters. Mm -hmm. so and he does low end really really well so on a couple of chad records like maybe black keys brothers mm -hmm. i took the alpha out mm. so the alpha is is no overstayer no alpha it's just the two eq and the limiting yeah but 99 percent of it is 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 uh alpha in and then maybe 30 percent lately is the overstayer in yeah but yeah it's it's a you know, it's a palette of colors that works really well together. Yeah. Awesome. Um, one last question for you. Um, do you have any advice that you would give to people who want to go in uh, and try the rig out, um, be it in mastering or, you know, obviously we just did some examples here and you, you know, you sort of guided me along on, on what to do with it. But is there anything that you want to tell people who go to try it for the first time, you know, watch for these things or listen for this or not, not really. I mean, the one, the one tip I guess on program material is that the, the, it is possible to clip the input gain of the focus, right? So 
if you have um well the chain is the chain outputs very hot okay so it's getting level is not hard uh but as a uh, starting point for your program material if you want to do that uh, somewhere around a minus 15 hmm. on your mix file coming in is a, is a good place to start gotcha other than that it's like you know <laughs> run it through it off you go start turning knobs you know that's the beauty of analog is that and the beauty of this chain is that it's a whole bunch of that it's a whole bunch of of do no wrong stuff but yeah i would for sending your mixes through i'd i'd start them at minus 15 ish you know give or take a couple db awesome all right i think we did it i think we did it did the thing yeah it is the access analog magic garden mastering rig in the cloud long time in the works and i'm excited to hear people shit themselves when they use it yeah <laughs> awesome <laughs> nice you all the beta testers have yeah <laughs> including mark been like right. what yeah yeah it's kind of what <laughs> kind of silly um, yeah so guys one more time there's a there's a coupon code for anybody who wants to go try it out uh it's magic dash garden dash intro and uh chris will yell at me if i got that wrong but i'm pretty sure that's our code Oh, you got it. Awesome. Um, yeah, Brian, thank you so much for uh, for doing this and uh, coming on the show and, and showing it to us and guiding me through it. That's really fun. Yeah. My pleasure. Thanks for thanks for having us on. Very cool. Uh, Chris, thank you for joining us as well and actually showing us the robot. Sure, yep. Very, very cool. No problem. Awesome. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I'm going to play a little bit of the Ghost Soul um, songs on the way out. And Ghost Soul, thank you for letting us use your music. Uh, Brandy and the Alexanders was the, the first song as well. And um, also Jared Evans from our Start to Finish series on Pure Mix. So thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye. I'm out of fun, I'm out of luck I'm out of breath, I'm out of touch And I can't explain, but it's enough It's enough to find me